Hello, I'm Chef Jeff Trombetta, and I am doing something a little out of the ordinary. I am going to show you how to make a palm cross. Uh, like these, they come big or small, you can't control uh, really the size, it depends on the palm, depends on how stiff it is and what have you. And I would be remiss if I didn't show people this, because I usually do this on Palm Sunday, and it's something that my mother taught me. So what we do is we cut off the dry end, and we cut off the real pointy top. You have to say, save some thickness here um, to make the palm. And these come um, double. A palm has uh, two sides, and we're going to split them. But first you have to take off the dry end. As much as it kind of kills you, because you want it as fat, and as long as possible, but it just won't fold right, it won't thread right, or weave right, whatever you wanna call it, if you have dry ends. And we can use some of this material to tie them up, like this. You know, cause you, gotta, you wanna hang them. And, and these can look very rustic. Um, and so what you wanna do is separate the palm like this. Remember I said they come two sides. And tear them in half. Okay. And a drier end will end up on one side. Ends up on this one right here. So. And this is pretty flexible. And these are getting a little dry because I got them this morning. And uh, I actually got a lot of them because I make them and send, send them to the family. Uh, I got a nephew in California and I have a, oops, let's go, and a niece in Georgia. And, you know, everybody gets one. Even the dogs get one. And um, so, you know, I'm not here to preach any kind of religion, but um, I think it's kind of a nice thing to do on Palm Sunday. And, uh, you know, I have always done it. And, um, like I said, it's been a tradition in my family. So this, okay, so get a nice uh, same thickness of two palms, or really one palm cut in half. And what you want to do is take the thicker side, and this is the start of your cross. Put more of a vertical end towards your body, uh, and a, more of a horizontal end away from you. Put the vertical end on the bottom, and then loop this over, all right? Have a little bit of overlap so it's a little bit wider. So when you start threading the palm through, you'll see uh, it can fit without breaking your lock nut, uh, nut here. That's essentially what you're doing is you're locking it. Then throw this in, uh, side over, right? Then you got, I'll make another one too. And then you're gonna lo uh, fold it over again. And then you're gonna bring this end around and kind of go through, all right? There we go. And this locks it, and you might have to lock the, the, the bottom piece too, because you don't want this thing coming apart. Pull that, that's pretty tight. Um, and if you have to use up valuable, uh, you know, I'll do it, uh, just to make sure it stays tight. So then I take that vertical end and I come around. Make sure you come around uh, so you're coming over the top. So you're coming back over the top. And you gotta find an, an open slit. Like I said, I'll make another one. There we go. So that's pretty tight. Now the rest is just weaving. And so you make sure you have an open end that I could come through. So I obviously can't go over there and I can't go through the bottom here uh, because, you know, there's nowhere for this piece to come out. So I go through here and, and I have to decide um, what... Um, now this is gonna be the back of the, the cross. So I'm gonna leave a bigger loop so we can make smaller loops up front and they'll show better. Uh, but we don't, you know, we wanna have enough length. So let's, let's start with that size loop. And it doesn't really matter. It's just a matter of trying to make it really kind of perfect. And you could have different size loops and all that junk. These aren't perfect by any stretch. But try to make the other side about the same size loop and you're gonna to try to get at least two loops per side. Um, 
and if you're lucky, you can get three. And in some cases, if you get a really long palm, looks like I have some, some nice palms here. Uh, so I'll be able to get three, maybe four loops on each side. And you just kind of make some decisions as you go, uh, how many loops. Now I can make these smaller and get a third loop, but I'm gonna leave this as is. Uh, that's two loops. And um, now, so for the back, so this is the back. So again, you gotta make sure that this is going to thread right through, whoops. Sometimes you wanna get the whole piece in there because what will happen is if it doesn't go through all the way, it'll kind of cut off the side, which is not bad either. Okay, so it was rubbing, it was a little tight. And um, so now, this is gonna be the small loop, all right? Because I have to go this way. And so I'm gonna be building in, the, in towards the back and I certainly want, see how this threads off there like that? Uh, so that's all right. I could thread it through. If I want to, yeah, thread it through, because I went no problem. And again, so I'm making the smaller loops here, because when I thread back, that's going to be, uh, that's going to be the big, bigger loop. So, see, I keep it a little bit bigger. See how this piece just kind of got torn off, threading through my knot, because my knot's very tight. It's actually a good knot. You don't always get it that good. Um, so let's go ahead and finish this up. See, this part is easy. It's just the beginning. That's what throws people. Okay. Um, so that's good there. And I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to cut this piece off. And you start to look at how you want it to hang. So I have this hanging piece here. And so the cross is going to hang this way. All right. And I got this little hanging, hanging piece. Looks nice. Um... Uh, yeah okay and this I could shorten up and tighten that up a little bit so so that little edge is not sticking out so much and then I'm gonna take this piece right here and um, or any of these scraps I have I just save and sometimes I just throw them in a potpourri potpourri um, you know as a base but anyway just make like a little knot and a loop and there we go knot and a loop and don't pull it too tight because you'll break it but just tight enough to hold cut off the edges and and that's it that's a palm all right let me get another one here uh, okay yeah it's pretty dry I guess these aren't as nice as I thought they were but they're all the same, all right? They're from this morning. Okay, so we're gonna cut right about there, all right? So you have some sort of thickness. That's really dried up. Um, cut right about there, so you have some sort of thickness, in other words, width, all right? Then you're going to cut off the, the dry end. Whoa, that's really dry on that side, all right? But let's get it cut off, because it won't bend, it won't thread that nice through your center and you don't have to make it all the same width you could still be wider it'll squeeze through and it'll look nice so let's move that and um, let's separate these right here okay see how I separated them and there we go and I don't really have anything too dry that's a little dry but I'm gonna make it work all right Sometimes a little bit of force. We're gonna start with uh, this side. All right, so again, a vertical towards your body. That goes on the bottom, and then this horizontal piece goes on the top. You fold the vertical side, let me see here, over, all right? You can have a little bit overlap, so you have a little bit more extra space. Then this gets folded. Uh, let me see, I'm trying to face my hands towards you, all right? That gets folded like that. Then you fold the whole thing down, right? And then, okay, this is important right here. You can't just go through there because it won't lock. You gotta go around the back to lock it in, all right? And you, whoops, 
just kind of go right through there. And that's a nice time of year, Easter, you know. I do have, do plan on a whole Easter menu. Whoops. You got to get above. He's going through the bottom. There we go. Um, I have a rack of lamb with a modern eggplant parm and a nice scallop potato uh, menu I'm going to do uh, very soon. But, and then, now, okay, so I locked that and... I want to lock the, the bottom too because that worked out all well. Sometimes, uh, well, I, sometimes I don't do that, you know. But again, I kind of come over this piece because it's kind of flipping up, and I go through the back and make sure it could come out and pull that and see how it's cutting that. That's okay. Sometimes it has a nice effect, and we could cut it off later if we want or leave it on. Sometimes the stringy effect looks good. So now, what I have here is I go through. Okay, I got a nice tight knot or button or center of the cross. And so it's a little harder to go through. So be careful. Sometimes these palms are strong enough to rip your knot. And we don't want that to happen. All right, so that's pretty tight there. And that's going to be the back. All right, the back loop. So that's going to be a little wider. All right, come through here. There we go. Come through here. There we go. Can you see? I don't look up at the camera. Okay, enough. Okay, so I'm going to try to get three here just to show you. So I'm going to make this small, small loop. And see, I'm going to reserve just enough to get three loops. Because then it's just got a nice dimensional effect, you know. And then we're going to come through with uh, that. All right. And you can play this in slow motion or rewind. See, that's a nice, that's nice. That's three loops, right? Now we go to the back. Now the back, again, you got, you got to make sure you go through. There we go. See, it comes out the other side. And you got to start to look at your cross and see what you want to do. This one looks good if this is the bottom. And I have a nice big loop there. But since I'm building it from behind, my smaller loop's got to go up front. I mean, so I make this smaller. So let's see, that's the plan. But, you know, the plans change. Make the top a little smaller because the bottom's going to be longer. And this is going to be a nice one, I think. I hope. Because this is the last one I'm demoing because I don't want to take up all your time. And I appreciate you watching. And. Okay, we're gonna just go two loops here. And let's see, I think just two. Kind of go through there. Whoops, and that's cutting. That's right. Whoa. Yeah, see what it looks like at the end. Okay, that's that. And we said that was gonna be, no, I forgot what he said. Well, we could do that, that as the bottom. And we could push this back in if we want. Okay, to make that a little bit fatter. There we go. Now let's see what we got here. So we said that was going to be the bottom. This side's a little wide, but it's okay. It's rustic. There's a cross. My mom would have something to say about it, but, you know, she keeps her palms in the freezer. She keeps them damp so they don't dry up, so they stay nice and moist and blah, blah, blah. But, uh... Anyway, this is what it is. So I'm, I'm making a loop to, uh, so I can hang it, right? Again, don't pull too tight, because you'll break it. Just tight enough to stay tied. Cut that off, cut that off, and it's gonna hang that way. You can see how this looks, this little growth, okay? I'm gonna leave it there, it's no big deal. Um, so listen, that's how you make a palm cross. That's not how you make a palm cross. That's one way to make a palm cross. Okay? And everyone gets one in the mail. And except for the family that lives local, like my boys, they'll come over for Easter and we'll have some fun. Hey, thanks for watching.